can you mix and match subwoofers on a show? If you take a QSC sub and a JBL sub and put them next to each other, are the phase please going to roll up and write you a ticket? You are right to assume that phase is part of the equation. We have to make sure it matches. But is phase response really all that different from sub to sub? What can we do ahead of time to check the phase out and make sure we're not going to get in trouble if we know we're going to have two different types of units? Because it's not just about brand to brand compatibility, but what about if you have two different subs within the same brand like QSC? So that's the exact question I got last week from a Danish DJ, Karsten Poulsen. Thank you so much for, for asking that. And he's got a KS212C, a little cardioid guy, and some KS118s. And today we're going to open it up and see like, okay, can he use all these rigs, all these subs on a center sub rig? And it's going to be a lot of fun. And so if you are super nerdy and enjoy looking at phase responses like I do, I've got a fantastic tool for you. It is my audio math survival spreadsheet. You can get that at producedbymkc.com slash audio toolkit with a lot of other great tools and you can go to the link below. But what it's got is a ton of great sound system design from line array stuff to propagation delay, everything you need to help make good quick calculations while you're in the field. But specifically phase delay is really helpful. So you can put in two different frequencies of, of finding where uh, two traces are offset put in their phase amounts and it's going to tell you the phase delay in time. So you can make syncing up two traces really fast and easy. And so check that out the link below. I think it'll be really helpful for you. So let's jump in and see exactly how I gather the data from these subs and then compare them. And we're going to give him a final answer and whether or not he can use those subs. Okay, let's dive in a little bit more into the question from our Danish DJ. He said he found me from these videos that I made on cardioid sub setups. So if you haven't watched those, I got an inline gradient and an inverted gradient video. So please check that out. And I do those with QSC KW181s. So he found me through that video and he's also got some QSC subs. He's got two KS118s, then also two KS212s. Both of those subtypes marry well from a phase response perspective with the K12.2 tops he has, but he's asking, can you put them together in a center sub setup all together? Or are they going to play nicely with each other? He goes on to say, yes, I know it's the phase response that determines that, but people usually say you can't do that because the phase responses are going to be different. But the good thing is, is we can measure that and prove that and see if that is actually true. And how we're going to do that is a couple of resources, one of them being Tracebook. So Tracebook is phenomenal resource uh, that you can have a, as a third party upload measurements of speakers that you've taken in the field. So this is where you go about six feet away, put a measurement microphone down in a speaker in a controlled environment, able to get really good coherent data, upload it, and now all these engineers have access to it and you can add and share it with what's going on. So Nathan Lively started that, shout out to him, he's killer, doing really good work here with some other engineers. I uploaded the QSC KW181 trace. So it's here and I've used it to see if it can marry with other different types of tops. Unfortunately, there is not in this library a KS-118, and there is also not a public GLL file from QSC. So a GLL file, um, you can pull up in GLL Viewer and look at the manufacturer's uh, phase and magnitude response in a really, really nice controlled environment as well. So Tracebook is different. That's third party engineers doing it with their own tools and software and uploading it. This is directly from QSC. So I have the KS212C GLL file. I can export it out put it in my audio analyzer and compare it with the trace I got from the KW181. So I'm, I'm sorry, Karsten, I think I'm saying your name right, that um, I cannot compare it with the KS118 because I don't have access to that measurement either as a GLL or a trace from Tracebook, but the KW181 is its precursor. So I'm willing to bet it's gonna be pretty similar. I'm at least give, give you a workflow method to see if you can do that. So now let's jump into open sound meter and see what we've got going on. Our red trace is the KW181. I took this measurement from six feet away. Um, 
I don't have the actual propagation delay or delay locator setting. I think I left it at zero. So that means the sub is gonna be late. We see a downward phase trend right here. So it is behind. If it were flat, it would be in time. If it were rising, it would be ahead. So it is down. So it is late. And we're gonna see if we can get the phase slope of the KS212C to match with this, giving us maximum summation. So if I turn on this guy, I've already matched it. So I've given you the answer a little bit that yes, this from a phase response perspective can match throughout most of the operating range. But what did I have to do to get it there? First, I had to add some delay. And I think this discrepancy has to do with the GLL file versus my measurement. If I take out all the delay, gotta remember 15.5, we can see right here that this is the flat part of the uh, phase graph for the specific measurement. So that's where it's on time. The rest of it's ahead. Everything below it is behind. And that is close to between 80, 90 Hertz. And compared to mine, I need to have apples to apples. So I need to add delay to get the phase slope to be the same. So let me turn off this polarity inversion, put back the 15.5 milliseconds. And this is how I got the phase slopes to match. You can see that's falling at the same rate on both the KS212C versus the KW181. So that gave me a clue of like, okay, if it's falling at the same rate across most of the range that I wanted to work, I think it's good. And the magic trick that got it there is I inverted polarity, basically adding or subtracting 180 from all the phase values with the KS212Cs, and we are in business. So I'm concerned mostly from 125 hertz down to usually 40 for these subs because this they don't do much below 40 hertz. So if I draw a rectangle right there, it's from here to here. And if they are right on top of each other from a phase response perspective, that means that they're going to add up and give me a plus 60 B. And know that I can go up to 50 degrees away and still get five dB. So if I make a little tool to help me, I'm gonna start from my zero line right here and drag up to just beyond 45 to get me what would be 50 degrees. So if I have the two lines, the pink and the green, within this span, they're in good shape. So they're on top of each other here. We wrap around and I go up. It's not until I get to, I would say 40 Hertz and open sound meter isn't doing me any favors and give me the little cross here that tells me the frequency. And it this it's not until 40 Hertz where we get diverge beyond that 50 uh, degree or 5 dB addition set. So an open sound meter, I would go here and add a math source and be able to combine both of these measurements and see what it would look like if they add together, which is super cool. But the CSV files uh, for each of these, as far as the data, they're different sizes, so it's not gonna let me do that. So I wish I could do it. Maybe I can reformat it and do a later video. But all that being said, if the KW181 is similar to the newer KS118, and you've got a KS212C on your hand, I would say you can make them work. First thing I would do is put them right next to each other uh, and then invert polarity in the KS212 and then turn uh, the 212s on and off and see if you get a bump up in volume. You may have to play around with the delay settings a little bit on them to get them to match if you're doing this without audio analyzer. In a perfect case, you would be able to throw a mic down, take a measurement of each right in the middle between the two, about six feet away, and then hopefully upload that to Tracebook. So if you got a KS118, please upload it. Also, if you got a KS212C, please upload it. So I'm not just having to rely on a GLL file. All right, so let's recap. Combining any two audio sources together, they're gonna, most of them are gonna be subject to some sort of phase. They all have a phase relationship to a reference and to each other. Some sources have phase delay, speakers have that natively, and the low end is almost always gonna be behind. So we can measure that, see if they line up on top of each other. We may have to do a polarity inversion, and we may have to do some delay to get that. If we wanna get real fancy, we can do an all-pass filter, which we did not have to do that today. I can get to that in a later video. But all that being said, yes, you can have two different subs within two different product lines from QSC, at least, and make this happen and away you go. So thank you so much for watching. This was a lot of fun to put together and we'll have more subwoofer talk later. Appreciate you.